Now, now this is so funny, because Gideon's freaking out, God's chilling out. So, so, so he goes over, he's starting to encounter him now. And, and so he goes out, look, look at what the text says. It says, this is comedic. It says in verse 12, it says, and the Lord appeared to him. So now God came out of his cloak form. You know, I'm a Trekkie and a Star Wars fan, so cloaking is just great for me. God can cloak himself, so he, pat, he has the patent on cloaking technology. So what happens is, is he, this is cloaking level number one. God has a cloaking level where he actually appears to you, but you don't know it's him, but he's there, okay? Just to see how you react once he knows that you don't know that it's him until later on he shows you that it's him. Now watch. So he says, the Lord is with you, almighty man of valor. That is weird. Okay. Y'all should have laughed on this part because this is why. This is why, though. This guy's hiding wheat in the wine press from the Midianites. But God shows up in a cloaked form and says to him that you're mighty. You're a mighty man of valor. The Hebrew term there is eshet chayo. It's a Hebrew word that's used of, uh, uh, in, in the book of Ruth. It's also used in Proverbs 31, and it's also used throughout 1 Samuel and the Kings. And what is to talk about a, 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 a people of great value? Now, him calling him a warrior, a warrior man, like a beast of a warrior dude, he's calling him a beast, like a, like y'all would say stud, black people, we say beast. Y'all say stud. We look, this is what happened, right? He ends up going and calling this dude beyond where he is, even though he's a sucker. Now, a sucker means a person that won't fight nobody. You get punched in the face, you won't do nothing about it. Somebody kick you, you won't do nothing about it. But this guy is afraid, and God calls him what he's not. I like the fact that God does not, when he comes around, just focus on our sins only. What, what, what an encounter with God is about, it's about showing you what you must turn from, but also who you turn to. That's very important in the gospel. And what's beautiful about being in Christ is he not only shows you where you are, he calls you beyond where you're not. He calls him a mighty man of valor. Now, mighty man of valor was, a, was not just a general army of men. It was a special ops of dudes where you sent in a few of them. This, these, are, these dudes are crazy, okay? Now, 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 it's like our version of, you know, our rangers or our, you know, black ops or our, 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 our seals, right? And, and w w what you do is you send them in for missions because these dudes are nuts. I mean, but the mighty men of valor in the Old Testament, it'd be 10,000 people over there. It'd be about five to 15 of them. And they'll look at each other. The mighty men of valor be like, think they stand a chance? Said, nah, let's go. Ah! And they'll go after him. And the 10,000 will look like either we're about to get tore up or these guys are crazy. Um, um, let me give you an example of a mighty man of valor. It's Joab. Now, Joab was a different type of mighty man of valor because he was a thug that was, got legalized to use weapons and then not be against the law for him to use weapons. And so I'm just telling you right now, you don't want to put the AK-47 in the hands of a thug. But anyway, so Joe, Joab, he, he goes in, and the reason why you know it's because one time David was getting cussed out from the floor down when he left out because Absalom got him kicked out of the kingdom because of what happened. And so one time he's, he, this dude was cussing him out, and, and Joab said, David, if you say one more thing, I just finished sharpening my sword. I'll cut his head off right here, right now. Have it at your feet in a few seconds. I mean, this dude is nuts, right? God calls Gideon this type of guy. Hold on. How does God call a punk and a sucker and a scared dude the best type of warrior? Because God doesn't see us merely where we are, but he sees us in what it looks like when he gets to us and change happens. And that's what I like about being in Christ, is God is always pushing his people forward to be what he wants them to be and casting vision. If God just comes to us in our strongholds and doesn't cast the vision of what we can be in him, but only cast the vision of where we are, we're in deep trouble. And so what's beautiful about God is God is the, God is the worst picker of people on the planet. Now, I'm just being honest. He, he doesn't, I mean, in, in man's eyes, God doesn't know how to pick, pick people to do anything. I mean, he wants, to, he, he wants to run the universe, kill it for his glory, do, change the world through the gospel, and he always picks the bottom of the barrel people. Now, what's interesting is, is in Philly, when we go on the basketball court, well, if we go on the basketball court, either you're going to bring your team or you're going to come out and pick the best team. So you're going to watch cats for a while. You're going to do like this for a while and bounce your ball for a little while and look at some people and see who the best do so that when you get your turn on the court, boom, you got a fat team. But see, God comes on the court with his sweatband on, you know, his Jordans on, <laughs> and God comes out there and he's like, man, he can't play that. Come on. Um, <laughs> 
You? Come on, come on. You're like, who, me? I've been here for five hours. Ain't nobody picked me. I'm coming. And then, I mean, I mean, God, God but, but see, this is, God is spooky weird because God doesn't look at people's potential. Never. He looks at their potential when they're in him. And he looks for his potential to put in them so that when he goes out, he doesn't scout like college scouts for NBA guys or, 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 or NFL guys who go out and look for people with skills to add to the repertoire of what they're already doing. No, God is the worst talent scout because he goes and looks for the worst people because he's going to give them gifts, not look for gifts. He's going to give them talent, not look for talent, so that when they start killing it on the basketball court of life, the glory goes to him and not them.